unfortunately, there was a time, once upon a time, if you said neurology or stroke, people would shrug their shoulders and say there's not much to do here. And we've come a long way since those times, and our, the, the present and the future is very exciting, uh, you know, with, especially with regards to stroke care. We have amazing uh, imaging that we could do on patients to look at their brain, to look at their blood vessels, you know, whether it's CAT scan, MRI imaging, and even ultrasonography to better understand our um, stroke patient's anatomy and treat them properly. So currently, one of the things that is exciting for us is we have these portable carotid ultrasound machines where we can, you know, uh, typically when we ultrasound patients' vessels, we're looking for, is there any stenosis in the vessels? But now we can look at the morphology of the patient's plaque and determine what would be the optimal treatment for these patients. We strive to be on the cutting edge of providing our stroke patients treatment. So we're always pushing to, you know, how can we expand the windows for our stroke treatments? Because currently when we give clot busting medications, for example, we have a limited time window where we can offer patients this. So we're looking into how can we expand this time window safely and do it in you know, select patients because you can't always do the same thing across the board with everybody. Everyone is so unique. Tenecteplase is a clot busting medication that we use in acute stroke patients, whoever is eligible to receive it. Um, so for many years, we were using Alteplase, which was the only FDA approved clot busting medication. In 2019, the American Stroke Association published guidelines. And in those guidelines, we were reviewing them and they had a section where they recommend, they could. Uh, one of the recommendations was to consider using IV tenecteplase in select patients with acute ischemic stroke. From there, you know, I started to get people together to see what was our ability to not only um, bring it into our hospital in our system, but what did we have to do to make sure that we could give it safely, which patients we would give it to, from when the idea hit us to when it actually went into effect? You know, it took about a year because in the middle of the whole thing, COVID took over, but we managed to pull everything together so that we could give it to our patients in a safe way. We still use both, and we have a protocol for who we give which agent to. And the beauty of this is we can study this for ourselves, which is exciting because rather than just jumping onto a bandwagon and doing something that may be in vogue, we're actually studying this ourselves and seeing which situation is, uh, you know, which drug tends to be more superior for which patient type and which stroke subtype.